if you are a nurse and you don't know the six C's of the nursing profession and also the five rights of drug administration, then your license has to be questioned. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Messi Mary Papu Lani, known as a nurse with the difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today, I'm going to be explaining, listing, and discussing in depth the six C's of the nursing profession and also the five rights of drug administration. I remember, should I say, as a nurse, after my graduation, I was asked, Nurse Miss Mary, what are the six C's of nursing? And also, what are the five rights of drug administration? I was able to list the five rights of drug administration confidently well, but when it came to the six C's of nursing, I was actually fumbling, and that was a slap on my part. <laughs> Before we go into details in today's class, if you are new on our YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today I'm going to be discussing and be sharing with you the six C's of nursing and also the five rights of administration of drugs. So in terms of the first C we have out of the six C, the first I have here on the board is care. You will agree with me that when you hear the word nursing, the next thing that should come to your mind is caring. Whenever you hear the word nursing, the next thing that should come to your mind is caring. Caring is our business. Caring is why we are called nursing. Caring is why you went to school. You have to know how to care for your patients as a nurse. And that is the number one for me. Because without caring for your patients, nursing is not accomplished. And nursing is not said to be done for your patient. So as a nurse, it is our responsibility to always put our patients first. To always care for our patients, to provide for both their physical, spiritual, psychological, and emotional needs when the time comes. So take note, the first C of C's of nursing is care. Then the second one I have here on the board is compassion. You may want to wonder what is compassion. In my own words, and some words of um, not just in my own words, I think generally. Compaction is seen or described as intelligent kindness, your ability to show empathy, your ability to, uh, to understand what your patient is passing through, your ability to take that shoe, that position, like, oh, oh if I'm in that shoe, how will I feel? How will I want to be taken care of? So it is our duty as nurses to show what compassion, to show empathy for our patient, to show our patient that we understand what they are going through and we are here for them and we are here to see them through this phase of getting back on their feet. So we have care and the second one I said we have what? Compassion. Then the third C is competence for you to be called a nurse you have to be competent first of all you have to go through school right for those that are the um, the bsc nurses you have to go through five at least five years in, in, a, in the university at least five years why i said at least five years because sometimes most students spend six years more than if not if care is not taken then also for those that are doing your diploma, your RON nurses, you have to spend at least three years to make you um, have your license, to give you the license that you are now a registered nurse. As a registered nurse or midwife, you have to be competent in what you are doing. You have to be competent, not just in rendering physical care to your patient, but also in, in emotional, psychological care to your patient. Your ability to detect what is wrong with your patient. Your ability to act accordingly to what is wrong with your patient. And to really be competent in your nursing skills and in taking care of the patient, you have to be open-minded to learn, to observe, and to see things the way they are, so you'll be able to what to carry out your clinical skills with ease and professionalism. Then the other one I have here on the board is communication. 
If I don't communicate with you, I won't know how to how to care for you. If I don't communicate with you, I won't know what is wrong with you. Without communication, I cannot care for you effectively well. So communication should never be left out because communication is very, very important and it is very, very paramount when it comes to the nursing profession. As a nurse, you should be able to communicate effectively well to your patient. You should be able to understand formal and informal communication. You should be able to understand body sign language of your patient. Your patient might be communicating with a body language. Your patient might be communicating with facial expression. Your patient might be communicating with you with a paper, with a write-up. But just learn to communicate effectively. It is the duty of the nurse to communicate effectively with the patient. I remember in the world where um, a patient was refusing to take some medications. After much talk, nurses talking, the patient refused to take the medication. So I decided to give it a try. I actually um, woke up to this patient with a broad smile. I tried communicating to the patient, telling the patient the importance of taking these drugs, which they, which we've already did. I just had to try. Others have, so we told them the, we told, I told the patient the importance of taking the drugs, why he should take. I started talking, talking, talking. But the crime of it all is that after much talk from everybody, the patient finally agreed to take the medications and get back to his feet. That is why communication is very, very important because without communicating effectively well with your patient, you will know where this patient is having issues you won't know why your patient is losing weight you won't know why your patient is not taking medication you won't know why your patient is not compliant you won't know what is wrong with your patient so communication I see is bay it's very very important when it comes to what when it comes to the nursing profession then the other one I have is courage 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 your ability to speak out your ability to defend your ability to advocate for your patient you can't see something going wrong with your patient and you keep quiet. So your ability to be courageous, your ability to speak on behalf of your patient make you the real nurse. So you as a nurse, you have to be courageous, you have to be confident, you have to learn to speak out. When your patient is passing through pain, you have to advocate. When they are treating your patient wrongly, you have to speak out. That is where the issue, the, um, the mindset of safeguarding, I don't know, for those that have not heard about safeguarding, safeguarding is very, very relevant when it comes to those people that are vulnerable, those people that are unable to speak out, the elderly, the neonates, the pediatrics. It is the duty of the nurse to safeguard this patient. It is due to the nurse to speak out for those patients. So as a nurse, you have to be what? You have to be courageous. You have to be bold. And you have to be conf confident. And you have to take responsibility for your actions. Then the other I have is commitment. Commitment. See, to be a nurse, it's not really easy. Because you are going to be facing a lot of challenges in the world. You are going to be facing a lot of um, a lot of things, a lot of challenges generally in the world. It could be with your patients, it could be with the healthcare teams, but your ability to know that, oh, I am here to ensure that whatsoever I do, my patient should get better. My patient should be okay. My, my patient should go home happy. My patient should be stronger than when he or she came to the, bed, to the hospital. So you have to stay committed to your work. You have to stay committed to the purpose why you are called to be a nurse. You are called to save. You are called to save your patient. So you have to stay what you have to stay committed. Commitment is of paramount importance. So as a nurse, you have to be committed to your duty. When you are competent, when you care for your patient, when you communicate effectively, with, you, have to, they, you have to stay committed daily. You are like, oh, it's time for your work. 8 a.m. should be 8 a.m. You should be there. It is better to come early than to come late. It is time to give drugs. You should know it is time to give drugs. Commitment, I see, it's broad. So as a nurse, generally, you have to stay committed. You have to learn to prioritize your patient's care. That aside, let's, you have to also learn to prioritize your patient's care. In terms of breathing, in terms of pain, you have to know who and who come first and you have to know how to delegate tasks because during the process of being committed the workload might be too much for you at that particular moment so you have to what you have to delegate one or two tasks to your nursing assistant to a colleague and also to a friend sorry and also to those around you that you know they are competent to carry out that procedure don't forget the ccs of um 
of nursing, we have care, we have compassion, competence, communication, courage, and commitment. Then that takes us to the five rights of drug administration. For those that watched our previous video, we said that um, when there's an error in calculation of drugs, there's going to be an error in administration. Definitely there's going to be an error in the dosage, right? So as a nurse, it is your duty to give the right dose to your patient. If it is 50, make sure it's 50. If it is 500, make sure it's 500. Sometimes there's an error with um, dosage administration because the handwriting. See, if you are not clear, if you are not seeing a doctor's handwriting, what is prescribed? please ask questions when you ask questions you will not miss road you will you understand so if you don't see the medication what is prescribed please and please make sure what you ask your questions so the first one I like earlier said is what is right dosage calculate your drugs um, your do your calculation properly get the right dosage and administer the right dosage to your patients Then the second one I have here is right drug Give the patient the right drug. Don't want to give control wrong. Give your patient the right drug. Then the other right is right patient. Don't give Mr. A drugs to Mr. B. Don't say I did not tell you. Mr. A drugs should be given to Mr. A and Mr. B drugs to be given to Mr. B. Sometimes the workload might be too much in the hospital facility. That is why you have to be calming down you understand take your time to arrange your duty take your time to play right write down what you are expected to do during the course of the shift just jot it down write everything down what you are expected to do during the course of the shift that will give you a guideline on what to do so you don't end up making serious mistakes during your shift so that's the right um, the right dosage right drug right patient right route you know we have some drugs that can be given IM, orally, IV. So you have to be very conscious to say, oh, am I giving this paracetamol? Am I giving PCM, IM? Am I giving it orally? Am I giving it subcut? Am I? They don't used to give it subcut. Am I giving? Just make sure that you know the actual route in which this drugs is being administered. Because if you give a particular drug in the wrong route, instead of IM, you are giving it subcut. It's not going to work. Instead of subcute, you are giving it IM. Instead of subcute, you are giving it um, um, IV. So there's going to be a problem. So one thing is to know the drug, is to know the patient, is to know the dosage, and another thing is to give it in the right through the right route. Then the other one I have is right time. See, sometimes the medications do work, don't work, especially those that do self administration. It doesn't work because. Um, you are not taking it accordingly. You are not taking it at that appropriate time. For example, a drug that's supposed to be taken every six, six hours and you are taking it every 10, 10 hours. It's, it's not going to work effectively well like you following the actual time that drug is supposed to be taken. So that these are the five important rights of drug administration. There are also other rights of drug administration such as rights documentation and so on and so forth. So if you have other rights, drop it in the comment section. The five important rights I shared with you is right dosage, right drug right patients right roots and right time don't also forget the six c's of nursing which is care compassion competence communication courage and commitment thank you very much for watching our video thank you very much for staying tuned don't forget to like don't forget to drop your questions and also beautiful comments in the comment section. And also, don't forget to share with a friend. Share with a friend if you got value. Good. For those that have not registered for our classes on Telegram. Seriously, what are you waiting for? You have been missing out. Why did I say you have been missing out? In our Telegram classes, we have voice notes already prepared. Voice note of cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, research, management, community. There are voice notes that explain the various topics in the system that make writing your professional exams as simple as possible. You can also check on us on our social media handle. Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, we are all over. When you check there, you see our beautiful success story. Beautiful testimony from more than a thousand students that have passed through us. 
Thank you very much once again for staying to you. Please like. Please subscribe. Please drop a comment. Please watch the next video. Bye.